KHOU 11 News at 5.30 starts now. Hi everyone, it's great to have you with us for this digital webcast. I'm Marcelino Benito. And I'm Cheryl Mercedes. We began this afternoon with a tragic end to the desperate search for a missing four-year-old boy. Just this morning, Texas EquiSearch was able to locate the child's body in a pond near the search area in Fort Bend County. Katir Winfrey was at the scene when crews spotted the child in the water. This was the scene moments after EquiSearch recovered eight-year-old Ryan Agabusi's body. Heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. A child is gone this morning. He'd been missing for just over 24 hours after authorities say he managed to get out of his home in this Fort Bend County neighborhood. Portia Smith is one of dozens to join in the search efforts in the hours after he disappeared. I woke up this morning. That's the first thing I thought about. His family had reported last seeing him on surveillance video around 4.30 Saturday morning. Fort Bend County investigators say the investigation clued them into this spot. This morning at approximately 6.50 uh, a.m. as it was uh, becoming daylight, the Texas EquiSearch arrived uh, here at the park at the Lake Mont Bend area. And sonar equipment later deployed Saturday picked up unusual activity, but at the time couldn't determine what it was. As night fell, they paused the search. And at first light Sunday, the search came to an abrupt end. We feel very sad for the family. There is still a lot to investigate, but authorities say children who have autism are often drawn to bodies of water for its sensory nature. The water sometimes moves. You may be able to see shadows and light reflected off the surface. So it's attractive to kids, and even if they weren't on the spectrum, water is very attractive to, to children. Investigators say it's not clear how the child got out of the house and hopes the investigation will reveal more and help a grieving mother find peace. Everybody needs to wrap their arms around you right now because I could not imagine. Reporting in Fort Bend County, Katira Winfrey, KHOU 11 News. Tough story to tell. There are resources to help prevent incidents like that one, whether it's individuals with disabilities or an elderly person who tends to wander. The Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office runs a program called Project Lifesaver. Now it helps families and caregivers watch over their loved ones. Take a listen. I would just say if there's any kind of um, of way that you could prevent it or that you feel that you can. Uh, we also have some resources at the sheriff's office that can be used in order to uh, to locate like they use it to locate elderly people. Firefighters are battling a deadly blaze at a mobile home on 2nd Street in Channel View. That was this morning in East Harris County. The Harris County Fire Marshal's office tells us that a 60 year old man was reportedly found dead inside. Investigators say the fire appears to have started behind a kitchen refrigerator due to an electrical failure of the appliance cord. At this time, crews are still investigating the cause of that fire. Right now, Houston police are looking for three men involved in a deadly shooting at a food truck last night. This happened around 930 on Chimney Rock near Galton Street. Officers say the three men were asking for money. Another man said he was going to get the money for them. He went to an apartment nearby and instead came back with a pistol. Police say that one of the other men opened fire and the three suspects then ran off. Police say they have video of that shooting and have identified one of them. So far, no one's been arrested. A man is dead after a shooting in an apartment complex parking lot near Braze Bayou Park. Right now, details are limited, but police tell us they were called to Sierra Blanca Drive because someone had been hit by a car. But officers found the man with multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators are searching for possible suspects. If you know anything, please call police. Today marks seven years since Hurricane Harvey hit Texas. The storm made a landfall as a Category 4 around 30 miles northeast of Corpus Christi. The eye went over Rockport and Fulton, then made its way to Houston and stalled, dumping more than 50 inches in Harris County. Many Texans, of course, lost their lives and more than 300,000 buildings took a hit along with up to half a million vehicles. Beyond the damage to property and infrastructure, the city showed the world what resiliency looks like. So hard to believe it's been seven years, yeah, Cheryl. We I was working that, that night, yeah. went home, got caught in the rain, 
so much rain, Pat Kaplan. I know you weren't here back then. There was so much rain. A lot of our crews weren't even able to get back into work. Yeah. Streets were completely cut off. And, and a of lot course, of people at KHRU lost their vehicles yeah. too and their homes. I was just going to say, and of course, we know the fate of what happened to the old KHRU studios in Allen yeah, Parkway. Big reason why we're here now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Water came in and the whole station was gone. Uh, fortunately, of course, no one got hurt or lost their life at the station. But I mean, just what a, what a powerful storm. And it was really just the power of the water because by the time it got to Houston, it wasn't even a hurricane anymore. It made landfall down in Rockport, Texas as a Category 4 and then just became a giant rainstorm by the time it got here. But still, we know the power uh, that a rainstorm can be uh, d can do here in Southeast Texas. So let's take a look at the tropics right now. We're going to start in the Pacific first because this is the spot that's the most active. A hurricane just passed by the big island of Hawaii earlier today. Right now, a Category 1 hurricane. Behind it, we've got Hurricane Gilma. That's a major Category 3 storm. And then another area of interest just behind that. As we get over into the Atlantic, though, there is nothing going on, and hopefully it stays that way as we go through the next few weeks, the next few months, the rest of the season. No activity expected here as we go through at least the next seven days. A hot day, though, here. 99, the official high temperature in the books. That's five degrees above where we should be this time of year in the mid-90s. Sunset coming up tonight at 751. Still 101 in Katy, 94 spring, same for NRG Park. 96 of Rice Military, a little bit cooler out towards the bay where the bay breeze has started to move on shore. But once you get away from the water, mid to upper 90s for a lot of us, you throw in the humidity and notice the numbers actually don't change much. And that's because if you've been outside, so you notice it's really not that humid. Uh, dew points right now in the low to mid 60s. That's a far cry from some of the brutal dew points in the mid 70s that we see uh, this time of year. You still have that down towards the coast. Of course, the closer to the water you get, the more humid it is. Uh, but these humidity values will start to go back up again as our pattern starts to turn unsettled getting into the start of the upcoming week. Satellite and radar is quiet right now, but look off to the east here along I-10. Some thunderstorms rolling through Beaumont. These will pivot into the area as we go through the evening. And as we zoom out, you can actually see a little bit of a swirl here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now that's a storm system, but it's not tropical. So this is not going to be a tropical storm, a depression, a hurricane, but it is going to bring us some increased rain chances starting Monday and then just continuing as we go through the rest of the week. In fact, our rain chances will start to increase here once the sun goes down tonight. So that's going to be the, the, the starter in terms of rain potential for the upcoming week. For Monday and Tuesday, this system moves on shore, brings us some better rain chances. Behind it, this boundary is kind of left stationary in its wake, and that will continue to bring us the focus for daily storm chances chances as we go through the next few days. So it's a 60% chance tomorrow, 70% chance on Tuesday, 50-50 chance Wednesday, back to 70% chance Thursday and Friday. No one day this week will be a washout, but it will be wise to have the umbrella nearby. There's tomorrow morning, a couple downpours out there. We could see some pretty heavy rain. Wherever you do see rain tomorrow, it'll be heavy at times, but it's not going to be for everyone. I think by the evening, things will start to die down. And then notice Tuesday morning, I think Tuesday morning looks a bit rough for some of us. We'll see more rain chances spreading across the area as early as sunrise and that morning commute. That'll continue through mid-morning. And then by the afternoon, chances become a little more sparse. And if we get any sunshine, temperatures still make it into the 90s. And then by the evening, things start to wrap up. So rain chances increase for this week. The highest rain totals will be at the coast. But because of the added cloud cover, because of the added rain chances, it won't be as hot but it will be more humid than it was today. 77 for tonight with showers coming in. Tomorrow it's off and on storms. 92, your high temperature. There's your seven day forecast. We'll do 92 with off and on storms again Tuesday. Uh, the rain chances drop a little bit Wednesday. We could pop back into the mid nineties, but notice higher rain chances will bring us some slightly cooler temperatures again by the end of the week. 90 for your Thursday, 88 Friday and Saturday and then back to 90 as we get into Sunday. So guys, no big flooding threat, nothing in the tropics, but definitely a more active week weather-wise coming up for us as we get into Monday. Been a while since we've seen the 80s in that seven day, Pat. Thank you. Yeah. Heads up for folks who had plans to see pop rock band Train and Ario Speedwagon tonight. That concert has now been canceled. This was posted on the band's Instagram story saying that due to voice concerns with one of the singers, they had to cancel all Texas shows and that they'll be back on the road for their Wednesday show in Denver. According to Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion's Facebook page, anyone who purchased a ticket through Ticketmaster or the box office will be refunded in the next 30 days. You can find more information on our website at khou.com. 
A six-year-old in Fort Worth is proving you're never too young to dream big. CBS Texas's Bo Evans shows us how Bryson was able to get a sneak peek at his dream job of becoming a police officer only for a day. Bryson's focused, he's motivated, uh, and he knows what he's looking for. Down! Two! There you go, come on! He's six right now, so he's got like 12 more years. <laughs> Not many six-year-olds like an emergency SWAT shield. have Bryson's focus. He's just a little early to his party. Unfortunately, he's not old enough to be a cop. Six is a little too young to join the Fort Worth police. But Bryson knows he wants to be a cop when he grows up. He's been really into police officers and police, so I said, okay, Bryson, then I'll support you. A few weeks ago, Bryson's mom took him to a reading with a cop event, and that's where he met Deputy Chief Buck Wheeler. From that meeting, Bryson, we found out, wanted to be a forward police officer. Because his enthusiasm was so obvious, okay, one more time. They invited the family to tour time. the station for a little hands on fun. He got to meet the chief. Uh, my man. Yes, sir. He got to do some training. Go for his legs. Go for his legs. There you go. We got to meet a real SWAT officer. Talk about a fun day. But for Wheeler and the rest of Fort Worth PD, it's about something a little more than that. Those relationships that we create with the community, those relationships we create through the with our youth in the city, those are how we actually solve and fix those things that cause a lot of the problems. Once they know you, they watch out for you and of the community too. Wheeler says building relationships like this one with Bryson and his family help cops do their jobs better and keep everyone safer. These happen every day out in patrol. Uh, the, the officers that are out there working, the men and women doing that, there's interactions that folks will probably never hear about, but they're affecting those families and having those opportunities. In Fort Worth, Bo Evans, CBS News, Texas. I love programs that give children like that those opportunities. So. Do they give 36-year-olds an opportunity to be a cop? <laughs> do you need me to make a phone call yeah, for can you, you? Can you? Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll have to do that. All right, All that, right. <laughs> that's our time for now, but we've got you covered anytime on KHOU.com. Yeah, we'll have more for you coming up tonight a little late, around 1030. We hope to see you then.